Since Galileo first pointed a telescope into the heavens, men have stared at the various planets in our solar system, wondered what they might be and what they might hold. And none, perhaps, has had more interest than the planet Mars, which has been found to be, most, in most definitions, the most Earth-like of any of the planets in our solar system, and the one most likely to sustain human civilization. My name is Ben Pearson, I'm the Roadster Tracker, and I'd like to talk to you about why Mars exploration is such an interesting area of fascination and why I think we should be going to the planet and be trying to get there. First of all, Mars has been known to have organic chemicals. We know from Curiosity, very recently discovered some quite complex organic chemical compounds on the planet Mars and has found that there's seasonal variation in the amounts of methane that's on Mars. Now, these organic compounds are not necessarily proof that there is some kind of life, but they are evidence towards that direction. We have found these organic compounds before and other things such as comets, but it's still a very tantalizing evidence, and, and there's growing interesting evidence that there's something unusual happening with the organic chemistry of Mars that uh, further investigation could reveal. And it might not be that we can ever figure things out completely with the help of robots, so we might need to send humans there in order to ascertain exactly what is happening. This is Gustav Crater taken from the Spirit rover and this has been one area that is shown to have liquid water in the past and a lot of very interesting evidence and in fact even though we've already sent a rover here this is one of the three prime candidates to send the um, mars 2020 rover that nasa is planning on sending there so there are many areas that hold interesting evidence of mars and you can even see this scene could be from Earth. It has soil and other things lending itself to a very Earth-like nature. For ages, men have been explorers, probably since they were first humans, since the first Homo sapiens have been explorers of some kind. This is a picture of the exploration of the seas that happened in the 14, 15, 1600s. And has continued on today until we don't really have any less any frontiers that are unexplored on on Earth. We had some exploration of the Moon with the Apollo program, but Mars is the next logical step to continue forward in that path of of exploration of our solar system. Speaking of the Apollo program, we saw that there was a huge increase in in engineering and technology that happened about 10, 15 years after the Apollo program happened. This is the percentage of science and engineering majors in the United States as dictated by the Bureau, the Department of Education. And what you can see is that in, 19, in the, the early 1980s, there was a significant number of engineering and computer science majors more than there had been in other points of time. Now that is likely, that's about 10 years from the Apollo program, and it could very well be that the youth who grew up with the Apollo program decided that, hey, I want to be an engineer, and it took them about 10 years to be able to finally achieve that goal, which is entirely possible. We know that that is a critical part of human development. Mars, the SpaceX plan, which this is an image for, is to colonize Mars to serve as a backup in case anything should happen on Earth. Now, we know that Mars has the best conditions to do this of anywhere. It has a reasonable gravity. It has the ability to grow things without necessarily needing artificial light, which is better than anywhere else. And you can just walk out on the surface. Mars has everything that humans need to support it. It has the chemicals, the soil, and everything non life, you no know, bacterial life, to grow and sustain life. So it holds a very interesting uh, passage into what we might be able to do as a human species and an interesting backup. When the United States and the Americas were settled in general, 
because of the the fewer labor and the people who were sent there tended to be some who who wanted to figure out a way to get things done some of the greatest inventions were created in the in the americas such as the cotton gin that totally revolutionized how we harvested cotton and was able to lead to much of the industrial revolution that happened in the 1700s and there were many other things that made this happen as well as previously mentioned, Mars has the chemicals that are necessary in order to sustain life and to grow things. And Mars could become the breadbasket of the solar system, feeding not only itself, but also potentially the asteroid belt and other planetary objects. It's not very likely that it would feed Earth, but it could feed all of the other objects that uh, could produce materials that are required on Earth. And thus it could serve an important function and becoming an interplanetary species. This is an example of a ship that could explore the, the solar system that is possible thanks in large part to Mars. Now, you can see that there's some greenery on the inside of this ship, but Mars may very well provide much of the labor required to be able to build these ships and be able to provide a lot of the simple things. Mars will likely be the producer of anything that is needed in the solar system that needs to be grown on a planet but is not otherwise able to be shipped from earth anything that does not require heavy manufacturing such as we have on earth because it's much easier to get into orbit from mars and so it could help the colonization of the asteroid belt and finally it could help to to uh, colonize even the the entire galaxy and to pursue uh, to a truly interstellar species. Um, thank you very much for joining me on this journey. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have, and let me know why you think that Mars exploration is something that's important. Um, thank you much for joining me, and until next time, keep on tracking.